we're back. Uh, the lighting's weird again because we're recording at night, so the shiny forehead is because I have... She's just... Just too white. Too yeah. white for these halogen... Or lights. Whatever. The bright things up there. The bright things. <laughs> There's not the burning ball of fire in the sky. Yeah, I don't like that one either. Oh, well. Um, I'm Ainge, or Lou. I'm Cindy. And we're faking sanity in Dawson Creek, B.C. Ooh. At... <laughs> Sorry, Cindy's I'm grooming shed, herself. I'm shedding gray hairs. <laughs> I got a haircut, so now it's even more visible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Faking Sanity is the name of our business, which is a bookstore and yarn shop and coffee shop. But as you can tell, it suits us well. Um, yeah. I we teased last week that we had some big news, so I'll let Cindy jump jump in with that. Our big news is that uh, in April. We're having, or we're hosting the first annual Peace Fiber Fest. Yay! <laughs> we So, yeah, we went from, um, well, two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, on the Saturday, we went, should we do this? Like, <laughs> three o'clock, joking comment, ha <laughs> we should do a Fiber Fest up here. Yeah. To... By five, we had two and a half pages of planning. Yeah. And by the next day, we were hinting about it on the podcast. Yeah. So we now have a venue um, and a date and a website and some yep. vendors already. And some social media accounts, which we'll, we'll link all of those below in the show yep. notes. So, um, so if you're watching on YouTube, they're just below the video. If you're watching anywhere else, click through to go to YouTube and you'll see them there. Yeah. Fiberfest! Yeah! It's going to be so much fun! Um, yeah, we've got a few vendors already. Um, both their people that we wanted to contact, contact right off the bat. They're close by. Yeah. Um, or, or friends. Or, or good, good friends. it's always easier to convince a friend to drive mm. a long way. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, well, our thought was the closest Fiberfest is... Well, okay, the closest one is in Prince George, which yeah. we went to. Which is five um, hours away, but over really, like, over narrow, the mountain. winding mountain pass. Not a fun drive. It goes over the Rockies. Yeah. Um, or Edmonton, which is seven hours away. Yeah. And so and we're kind of in the middle of the Peace region, which is why it's the Peace Fiber Fest. Yeah. And so Grand Prairie's not far away, Fort St. John, Chetwind... Um, hopefully we'll get people from all over. Yeah. Uh, everyone we've talked to about it so far is really excited. So oh, yeah. we already have someone willing to teach some workshops and someone somebody else who's going to do some demos. demos. So yeah, we're really, really excited. Yeah. Um, super, so super excited. I think we won't announce um, vendors until no, no, they're until official. We, like yeah, we, yeah. We've got four or five that have already said Yes, yes most tentatively, likely. Yeah. Um, but we're waiting on two details from our venue, yeah. uh, just to confirm the booth sizes and prices. And prices and stuff. Um, and, and then we'll be sending those out, applications and information out Yeah, we're, we're going to be putting out a call for vendors. Yeah. So if you know anyone, or you, you are someone who dyes yarn, makes bags, yeah. makes anything fiber-related. stitch related. markers, felted dryer balls. Well, actually, not felted dryer balls, because we already got have someone. someone but fiber... Um, handmade bats if you have anything you'd like to sell uh, contact us yeah or if you're close by and you'd love to do a demo or a workshop or mm -hmm. you want to volunteer contact us yeah and and if you want on our website on the peacefiberfest.com website you can actually sign up for a newsletter and, yeah. and we'll so be doing that a, soon it's a pretty bare bones website so far we just just got the basics up um, but we'll be adding more details as, as yeah. we can. Um, but right now it just has a, a little about us and about the Fiber Fest. And, uh, We're pretty excited. And, and then uh, sign up at the bottom if you'd like to sign up for uh, a newsletter about being a vendor or about volunteering or just about the Fiber Fest itself, like to yeah. shop um, if you want information as it's getting yeah. closer. Um, but yeah, we'll have downloadable vendor packages and information packages that you can download this and week. check out this week and then applications as well um yeah. and we're offering because it is the first time and it's and a, a far drive for a lot of middle of nowhere yeah, for a lot of people uh, if you're interested in vending but think the cost might be prohibitive we are offering a couple of subsidies um for people so that's part of the vendor application we're actually offering uh like just 
check here if you're interested in a subsidy and tell us why, yeah. basically. And whether it's because you're a new vendor and, and don't really have uh, a cash flow yet that yeah. you're, you're used to doing shows with, or if it's because you're driving from far away and it helps offset the travel, like whatever it is. Um, yeah. yeah, we just want and a whole bunch of people to come so that it's yeah. super successful and everybody here gets to see new stuff. Um, a lot of us are used to shopping online, but we, you can't get to feel the yarn. It's so. really, it's really fun to actually see the stuff in person and meet the dyers and yeah. everything. And we also um, have a few people willing to billet yeah. uh, vendors. So if you're a vendor and it would really, really help not to have to pay for a hotel room. Or if you're someone in the area who'd be interested in putting someone up and we were thinking we'd just do like a big dinner for everybody the night before here at the store. Uh, everyone who's already in town. Yeah. Um, uh, if So if you're someone local who's interested in doing that, interested in billeting somebody, let us know. You know, let us know about anything. Yeah. If you have any ideas about how to make things better, <laughs> um, we will accept them all and, yeah. and then pick but, and choose. And, um, it is the first year, but we are planning it fairly large to make it worth the while for people to come from yes. all different venues yeah, or all got, different areas. We so got like 3,500 square feet. Yeah, so it'll be a fairly large, like it's a, the main mm -hmm. ballroom of the large hotel here, in t one of the large hotels here in town, plus an extra conference room attached to it. So we'll have um, like a food and sit and knit area as well as a classroom plus the main room mm -hmm. for all the vendors. All so. Right. Um, It'll be loads of fun. At, sorry, we're looking at getting in um, a I bunch of vendors. You're going. I, I'm not sure where I was going. So <laughs> we're looking at getting in a bunch of vendors. We have enough kind of tentatively booked that we could run it like this, but we want a lot more. We want lots. Um, we want to fill the space and make it super fun for yes. everybody. Yes. So, yeah. so. Cyber Fest. We're yeah. super excited. Yeah, we are. We are. And a little stressed. Yeah, you're. You don't seem stressed. I'm hiding it. You seem I'm, stressed. No, I'm in. I'm in planning mode. <laughs> oh, oh yes, because that it, it doesn't look anything at all like stressed mode. Oh. Okay. Anyway, let's go on to FOS. Okay. Because we both have one. We each have one. We each have one. Because yeah. we both have one sounds like we each knit a sock. <laughs> and put them together. Okay. She's weird. So my FO is something I wasn't working on at all last time. Yeah, this is brand new. <laughs> yeah, well, I was like, so I'm working on the big cable shawl and I'm working on my sweater and everything and I'm like, I need something that's really easy and kind of mindless to knit. Um, An and all my, gratification. Well, yeah, and all my socks were like either at the heel or where I had to measure things and stuff. Yeah. I was like, I just need something really easy. So. It's this cute little hat. Um, the pattern is From the Thaw by Sarah Ferguson, who is a local designer. She's, yeah. She actually used to be staff here a long, long time ago. A um, few years. And she does. And she did the awesome From the Sea shawl that I really loved test knitting for her. From the Shore. From the Shore? Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> she has From the Frost, which was her first hat. From and the then Thaw. From the Thaw, and then From the Shore. Yeah. I don't know why I thought from the sea. Yeah, she's yeah. got. A, she's and then got another a bunch. one that's not. Yeah, she's from got the... a, a bunch now. She's got. No, that's it. And well, and one more that I was going to say. I can't remember the name of, but it's not from the something. Yeah. So yeah, it's really cute. It's in. Oh, um, mm -hmm. the yarn is Ancient Arts. Oh, do I have funky hair? Yes. Thanks. Um, <laughs> don't uh, mind us. The yarn is Ancient Arts Big Squeeze in water lily blue. I really love it. It's a huge, it's a bulky, plump, oh, just squooshy yarn. Yeah. I really like it. You got mm. that when we went to Edmonton last yeah, summer, Yeah, I got right? it from River City Yarns. I've got another skein as well mm -hmm. in a dark blue that I really like. I think, I think this one might be a gift or something, and I might make something for myself out of the other skein. But yeah, it was, it was really fun. It was, I started it one day and finished it the next. Yeah. Um, Super quick. Knit. I love bulky hats. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wee! I haven't blocked it yet, but really, it's a hat. The yarn's a little fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good look for you. I'm a hoser. Sorry. Okay. 
Nobody else is going to know what a hoser is. Every Canadian will know what a hoser <laughs> is. Well, maybe not. But anyway, that's her FO. I like it. <laughs> great pattern. Great yarn. Happy, Good happy, combination, happy. too. Yep. 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 Okay. Yours. And I have an FO, too. Yours is fancy, fancy. I <gasps> finished my socks. So they were my hand-dyed fiber, hand-spun socks, hand knit socks for the HH Sock Along by uh, Ken, who is also Comhus on Ravelry, and Homestead, uh, Hobbyist. Homestead Hobbyist on Instagram, and that's his uh, online shop as well. Um, so he sells fiber, and he was pulling out, putting out some new sock blends, so he decided to host a sock along where we spun the fiber for um, the Tour de Fleece, and then knit up the socks for the fall. You finished it? Much after you were supposed to. Oh no! I guess it was you uh, were knitting. You're supposed to be knitting it in September. September. Okay. Yeah. I finished it. But still, it in the October, fact that you got it done within two months is pretty impressive. Amazing. For me. <laughs> really amazing. But so, yeah. you were really having fun with it, though. I was, and they're so comfy, and yeah. they look odd because they no, have. Oh, they're fabulous. They have the sweet tomato heel, which makes them not lay flat like a normal sock. Yeah. Um, but it fits me really well, and they also look odd because they are. Quite a bit different lengths, but that's the difference in length for my feet. Um, so a non-pattern sock works well for me, <laughs> but I'm super happy with them. They're super I, comfy. I, I, I really all the like ends. that they're like evil twins. Well, that's because I would have been miserable with this. I knew that the purple <laughs> part wasn't dyed equally. I still have lots left, but I knew I had it more solid here than striped, and I couldn't deal with it if it were that mismatched. Uh, so, so I decided went way mismatched, and that's better. Uh, well, like a bad match is worse than not trying Excuse to match. Me. I think. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, purple to blue very and blue nice. to purple, and I'm super excited, and very, they fit very, very perfectly, nice. and they're so nice and cozy. Yeah, socks. Yay! Okay, so my first fo. No, not no, fo. Whip. whip. Oh, brain is so not working been a long week I don't know why um so I showed you this last time I had just started it I think yeah you hadn't separated Ooh. for the sleeves yet oh well no nowhere near that yes so this is a sweater I am knitting a sweater people. it's recognizably it's a sweater now it's recognizably a sweater okay so the pattern is thiony thiony is that how yeah. you say it okay by Tori Gerbiz Gerbiz um and the yarn is Cascade 220 Superwash mm -hmm. Um, I really like it. It is, okay, it is the neatest pattern. Ooh, I'm just going to trap the needle so don't it doesn't mind my needles. clank. Okay, it is the neatest thing because it is a top-down seamless, except it is it is set in sleeves rather than raglan. Yeah, it's really and cool. I want to try uh, that. Yeah, I really like it. I tried it on. It fits um, perfectly. It, well, I mean, it's a bit big in the shoulders, but that but, always happens because my my bust measurement is too big. <sighs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they're always a bit big in the shoulders. I already have ideas about how I could tweak it to make another one, but I love it. It's going to be a cardigan. Uh, you're going to wear that so much. Yes. Too. And I probably will add a pocket to it. Mm -hmm. the, the pattern itself is a two color one. Um, I'm just doing it one color unless I run out of yarn and then I'm going to borrow my red put some <laughs> put some oh no I was talking I was thinking about getting um some of the impulse DK because oh. it, it would knit up to the same yeah our DK is pretty plump and yeah that and this super is, wash a, is very thin yeah it's supposed to be a worsted but cascade 220 super wash it knits it, more like it, a DK it knit I, I like it better at a DK gauge yeah. than a worsted because I did try it for a worsted sweater yeah and I just didn't like it but yeah. I'm so happy with it. It looks so plain right now, but mm, but that's what you wear. Yeah, I'm totally. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna get it. Cozy it's, up in it too. I, I feel yeah. bad because since we started the podcast, Ooh, you're losing your sorry. voice. Yeah, we've both been doing a lot of like. I was knitting other stuff, but lately I've <laughs> no, been in the mood for this. No, I did some. I did some cables and stuff. So yeah. yeah. So that's my sweater, and it's I'm so really cool. happy with it. Um, yeah, I'll probably add. At least one pocket, just because I like having a pocket. Yeah. But you need one for yeah. your keys. Yeah. Yeah. Though I can always put those in my pants pocket. Yeah. yeah. Put it on your head. My keys? Yeah, or hang them over the yeah. like, <laughs> arm of your glasses. Mm. 
Oh god, that really hurts my eyes. Well then don't do that. Okay, she's crazy. Uh, I have a whip too. Whip it's a brand new one you haven't seen. But um, you've talked about it. I had talked about doing the Selbu Mitts by Ellie or Skein De from Skein Deer Knits. Uh, so this is the pattern here because I don't have enough of it knit up to show you. And this is what I've got so far. So I started these yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so they are for a gift for someone. Um, so this is the inside of the palm. So the little uh, checkered pattern and then this will be the thumb and the edging. And I just switched the um, patterned cuff for a ribbed one uh, because of who it's for. I think that'll be more yeah. fitting for them. And then there's the beginning of my Selbu star. They're so nice. Yeah. And I love those two colors together. Yeah. So this is, I'm, I'm doing what you shouldn't do. I'm knitting it out of superwash. Um, it is a DK. It's our impulse DK out of Goth Girl Rising and Year of Fog, which, oh, there, that's better. Yeah, it's, it's not kind of quite, a it's just light a pale, gray. pale, really, pale gray, really almost pale. white. Yeah. And I love how they're looking so far together. Just love that. Yeah. Love it. Um, and I had mentioned on Ravelry that I would show a couple of trips, trips, a couple of trips, um, a couple of tricks to keep your um, floats looser around the edges, around the corners. Um, so one of the things I made sure I was at the end of a row so I can show this. Um, however, I have twisted my yarns around. Give me two seconds. Okay. This is fascinating watching. <laughs> it is. You can get to see my yarn dance. Um, so if your last stitch on the one needle is the same color that you want to do for the next needle, for the next stitch, it's no big deal. But if you're trying to use um, your second color and it's back three or four stitches, what I usually do is um, trap the color. So I'm just going to get up and get closer to the monitor here. Monitor. No. No. Phone. Screen. Screen. Yes. This is fascinating to me because I am going to try color work for the first time. Really, I am. <laughs> you, you can't see. Okay, so I've got... Is, the, is that blowing out? No. No, okay. it's okay. Um, so... Oh. Sorry. Okay. We've got this. Why don't I just film you doing this later? Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> okay, we'll pause here so we can put that video in here. Okay, um, so one of the things I do um, to keep my floats nice and loose around the ends here is trap my floats, which a lot of people, like you always trap your floats if you've got a long series of stitches in one color. Um, but I don't know if anybody, any of you do it this way, so I thought I'd show how I do that. So I hold one color in each hand, and um, if I'm going to trap, say, the, the white here, I'm going to wrap the stitch the way I normally do, wrap the other color, and then wrap the white back so it's behind. So this is a purple stitch that you're trapping This is trapping a purple stitch, white. and I trap okay. the white behind because if I want it at the beginning of the other needle, it's too far away here. Um, so what I find is if I trap it really close to the edge, then the float isn't trying to go around four stitches here and back this way before I use it again. So I don't cut it too short there, which tends to tighten up your knitting a lot. Um, so I tend to trap the float on the last stitch or the stitch before if I can, um, just to make sure that it's as close to the edge as possible. Um, the other thing you can do if your uh, color is too far on the other needle, when you start the new needle, Sorry, I've got really fine cords on here, so I have to move them around manually. But, um, when I'm, and I've never seen anybody suggest doing it this way. It's not the easiest, but, or no, it's super easy. It's not the uh, most elegant solution. But if my white is from too far over here and I don't want to cut it across too tightly, sorry, dropped my needle. Um, what I usually do is 
hold my finger on the last stitch here holding the white yarn and I don't let go of it so I hold it to make that big loop there until I've made the first stitch and then I will knit my second stitch before I pull to cinch anything up so I haven't tightened it so you can see on the inside here the floats are all kind of consistent uh, lengths there there's no none that are really loose and gapy and none that are pulled super tight either um, so those are what I do on the corners if I have a long stretch here that trapping the float that I showed you um, you can do it for the color in your left hand as well um, so if I'm going say seven or eight stitches I might do three or four of them and then trap my float so if I want to trap the white, I'll wrap it around, then the purple, and then I bring the white back behind. But if I wanted the opposite, say I wanted a, a white stitch here, and it's in my right hand, I would wrap the purple around counterclockwise, the opposite of usual, then wrap my white stitch normally, and wrap the purple back. And now I get the white stitch, but the purple's trapped behind. And it works really well, and it doesn't show through, and yet it makes nice even floats on the back. So you can see um, that's what I've been doing all the way through here. And you can see the star design come through um, because the floats are all relatively the same tightness. Um, so hopefully that helps. I know a few people had questions about floats and keeping them even. Um, and you can see along the edge there they're not any tighter. They're shorter floats because I trap them right near the edge if I can, um, but they're not tight, they're not pulling the fabric, and they're not loose or gapey. So hope that helps and we'll see you next time. Okay, so sorry for the attempt to do that on screen backwards, but um, hopefully you've just seen how a, a couple of trips I... Trips? Tricks. <laughs> Wow, Recording you can at tell the end of the day is not a good idea. Mm, yeah. Um, hopefully you've just seen the couple of tricks that I do to keep my floats nice and uh, loose around the corners. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into that um, Colorwork Cal thread. Yeah. We're super um, excited about it and we're happy to answer questions. So if you've got She'll any, answer questions. I'll be like... <gasps> I, I am by no means an expert, but I love doing it, so I have picked up some tricks over the over the years. Um, and you can see, like, this isn't super, super smooth right at the beginning. You can see there's a little bit of tight spaces there when I change from the gauge in the cuff to the color work gauge. But, um, yeah, I really enjoy it. And, and the floats are pretty even. If I pull this out. You can actually see the design. That's usually a sign that you've got the floats about about right. So, yeah. Cool. Anyway, yeah. those are my mitts. I'm loving them. I don't know why I waited so long to cast these on. I knew I'd love them, and I do. And uh, they'll be finished very quickly, I think. Well, yeah, you've made good progress. Yeah. Um, so my other whip is this one. It's a sock. Yay! It's a pink sock. I can't believe it. But yeah, me either. Um, pink sock. It. Uh, it's just my. I, I seem to always be saying this, but this is just a pattern I made up. I mean, it's my basic sock pattern. I do a, a t same toe every time. I do fish lips kiss heel, which is by Socks Therapist. And this time I've got a um, texture. Pattern. Yeah, stitch pattern that makes a texture. Um, and the stitch pattern is from Hermione's Everyday Socks from, by uh, Erica Luter. Um, so, Very popular sock. Pattern. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, that pattern is actually a top-down, normal heel flap and turn. Well, I have partridge, I think. Um, but I, I like toe up. I don't know why. Yep. So that's what I'm doing. And it's in this awesome gradient. Um, it is Faking Sanity Compulsion Marbled Gradient Set yep. uh, in Raspberry Beret. And, and these are dyed um, to be identical skeins. Yep. So, so I've got two little 50 gram safe skeins. Ah, 
Yep. So, mm-hmm. And there doesn't show that they're identical because she made a mess of her skeins. But. <laughs> um, I am loving it. it. It has cashmere in it. And I've always been like, cashmere in like socks. But, but it also has nash. N- n- Nashmere. Nashmere. It also has nylon. It has nylon. <laughs> um, and they fit so nice, and I can't wait. I'm just on the first sock. I was going to actually knit these really long, but then yeah. I realized I think I have about enough yarn to hit the middle of my calf, calf, which um, wouldn't be very handy. So I'll make them kind of normal It's going to waste part of my pretty gradient. Well, no, I'll make something else with it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very much enjoying them. That's cool. Um, yeah, I needed something that was not super complex cables. Yeah. Um, I haven't worked portable. on that one. Yeah, I, both both my projects that I was working on last time are, have gotten quite big. Yeah. So, which is also why you're not going to see the blanket today. I'll bring it in when. And she hasn't worked on it. Uh, I'll bring it in she when the weaving is done. Um, hasn't worked to on show it at all. all. But yeah. Yeah. That's that's it for whips, I think. Um, our cowls are still going strong. I mentioned the colorwork yeah. cowl. Uh, I didn't mention the date, but that's going till the end of the year. So definitely, there's lots of time left to get started and do a project. Um, yes, half, which I'm going to be doing. Half a minute. So uh, half a minute. Half a minute. Half a mitten in okay. a day. Um, means pretty much anybody can do it. Pick an easy one if you've never done it before. Pick a hard one if you if want to challenge. If you've never done it before, join me. I am going to start that soon. Yeah. And some of our local knit night ladies who haven't done color work in years are going to be do- doing yeah, some. Yeah, so which is cool. It'll be fun. Yeah. Um, um, and our other cow, Knit to Alaska, well, Knit and Everything to Alaska, um, is going great. And... And I got some more yarn. Cindy, Cindy needed more yarn. I definitely needed more yarn. Yeah. So, just a couple really kind of basic yarns. But um, I got <laughs> a bag of black um, Estelle worsted to go with all my rainbow colored yarns that I had before. So I'm going to... Because black and rainbow look so good together. Yeah. So this it is just... just makes the colors pop. It's a great um, yarn. They're just really basic. Ooh, my face yeah, just went like, like... You just made my face white. Yeah. Um, wider. <laughs> wider, yes. Um, this stuff, it's 50% acrylic, 40% wool, and 10% nylon. But um, it's great yeah. yarn. I really like it. I've got it in the worsted for rainbow hats, and I've got it in like the bulky or chunky, I can't remember which it's called, um, for Hudson's Bay hats, which mm-hmm. I should work on. And then we each got some. This we have not tried before. Yeah. We it's, had a special order from a customer. Yeah, so. and she needed eight skeins, and it came as ten. So we each got one of these. Anyway, it is Cascade Boliviana Bulky. Um, it's just 100% merino wool, uh, nice and bulky. Yeah. It's a 200-gram skein. Um, if you're familiar with Cascade Echo, it's got a much p- tighter ply twist. Like, I yes. love this, and it's way, way softer. And chunkier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a true chunky. Yeah, thing. it's like um, 160 meters to 200 grams or 175 yards to 200 grams. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited because this is going to make uh, all sorts of fun um, fast hats. Probably. I think I'm going to do cables <gasps> with mine. Ooh, a because, big cowl. Yeah. Mm. And it'd, it'll be, it looks like it'll have great stitch definition. Yes. So. I was thinking, oh, yes, I had decided on a pattern. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a big cabled cowl. So I will start that at yet, some but. point. Um, and and tomorrow we're having a yarn swap here at the store. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I, I don't have any yarn that I really, really want to get rid of, but I have a few skeins that I'm willing to part with if someone else loves it more than I do, mm. and if they have something that I really, really want, or yeah. if they want to pay me, but yeah. usually I tend to swap. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be so much fun. Yeah. I've got lots of people coming. Yeah. If you're in the area, uh, we're going to try to You uh, won't get see this. this before. I'm going to try to get it encoded and uploaded in the morning, as long as our internet's good. Um, so if you do see this and you're close enough to get here before the yarn swap, <laughs> it takes place at 2 o'clock here at Faking Sanity, which is um, 901B, 103rd Avenue in Dawson Creek. 
So um, um, you can look it up on Google to get here. 2 p.m. on Sunday, October 21st. Yeah. Since, Until 4 know, p.m. Yeah. To bring whatever to yarn you don't love anymore and swap it with others for yarn they don't love anymore. Yeah. And it's usually a lot of fun. Yeah. And we're um, not, like, the store is closed. We're not, um, uh, we won't have food or anything. If somebody sees some a, a thing they want, we can ring that through. But uh, basically, it's just providing a venue for people to swap their yarn. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Should be a lot of fun. It is. It usually is. Yeah. Um, so is that all the yarny bits we have today? I think so. <gasps> you know what? We do have a couple new acquisitions for the store. Which ones? Stuff we got this week. If you want to babble, I'll grab them. Okay. I don't know what I'm supposed to be babbling about, but now I'm really curious because I don't remember. <laughs> I thought we had talked about the new stuff on last week's podcast. But um, she's, she's bending down to the shelf of new stuff. And uh, yeah. I really have nothing to talk about. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, we are very excited about the um, Fiberfest, and I've been kind of consumed by that this week. It's been all I've been doing. So, oh right, we got we some did German get sock new yarn. Stuff. <laughs> so, we got three different German sock yarns. Um, these ones are uh, Regia Nautic color. And they're all different blue and white stripey yeah. patterns. So they're like all nautical themed striping Oh, I got two yarns. that were similar. Oh, well, well that's, that's okay. silly. Different width stripes, but. Yeah, and they all, yeah, they're yeah. really cool. Yeah, and the Regia, a, a lot of people don't know this. On the inside of the ball band on Regia, they actually have a warranty or a guarantee that your socks won't wear out for 10 years. If you keep your receipt and your socks wear out before then, you can return it to them. Uh, with a picture of your sock and your receipt, and they'll give you a new ball for free. They're fabulous. Um, this is some of my favorite socks that I've had and not worn out has been Regia. It's really cool. Yeah. Cool. You have to send a sample of the deficient yarn. Anyway. Yeah, yeah I think they say, like, send, send your the receipt, sock yeah. maybe in the receipt. Or... No, it just says a sample of the... Anyway. Um... Oh, so they can match the color maybe. And then we got um, Prolana uh, Tanheim 6 and their Gradient Socky ones. So it's this one goes... Golden Sock Stretch Tanheim 6. Sorry. <laughs> um, this one goes from a light green to a dark green. Yeah. Um, and that one... I love this one. This one might come home with me. So it goes from this um, tonal gray to a corally peach inside. Yeah. And there's like it's a double gradient, so you get two socks, and it's just beautiful. Yep. And it's got um, it's seventy percent wool and twenty three percent nylon, but then it's also got seven percent polyester elite, which is, um, uh, is like lycra. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's not lycra because lycra is a trademark. Uh, name, but, yes. Yeah. But we thought they were really kind of cool. Yep. And it's a nice soft yarn, but really high twist and great long wearing. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's a good place to see. Yeah. Look at that color. Like, isn't that a beautiful, like, gradient for a sock? They're cool. And then we got um, some Rolana Flot Sock in Christmas colors. Yeah. I realized I wouldn't have time to dye enough to make it out on time, especially with the Canada Post strike that we had a possibility yeah. of, so. Yeah, so this is this year's Christmas color, and it, it knits up like that. Um, this is the cool. one Cindy likes. Very then, traditional Christmas colors. Well, not with the brown in there. But, like, it's a very traditional green and red. Oh, yes, you're yeah. right, it is. And then this is last year's Christmas colors, which I still really like. But, it's the one I love. It's um, a darker it's, red and more of a tealy green. Yeah, and it oh. knits up like that. What? It was getting a glare. It wasn't showing well. Yeah. Anyway. Christmas! Yay! So yeah, see, we did get some stuff this week. She just we did. Stopped. I had no idea what you were going to get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah. My, my, uh, my favorite of the Nautic distracted. color already has sold. Yeah. And we only got one set of it. Um, I think we should get that one I think one we again. should get some more. Yeah. Yeah. They're, um, they're... If any of these interest you and you'd like to see them up on Etsy, let us know. Or just you know contact us and we can yeah. put them up um 
because they're not up right now, though yeah. we probably should. We just have been busy making well because they were single, a website. Yeah, and, because yeah. they were single skeins of each color. We haven't listed they're any not, of these. These ones aren't. No, but, but all the others were. We yeah. got like a program, like one of each color. So yeah, just to try them out. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested, message us or contact us in some way. Yeah. But yeah. Yep. 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 Um, That's it for yarn. Yeah. So culture consumed. Yeah. Wow. Um, we did a thing. We did a thing. We went out of the house. No. <laughs> uh, it's true. Last weekend, uh, we went to see the Thank You Canada skating tour. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, it's figure skating, but it's basically all the most recent amazing Canadian figure skaters. Yeah. So Olympic figure skaters. Olympic. Yeah. Like, and these, and most of them are, or all of them are retiring this year or already retired. Yeah. Um, and so it was like uh, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore who won. Oh, they won like worlds two or three times and they won. No, I'm thinking gold. of the Olympics. Did they win gold this last time? Yeah. Yes. And silver the time before? Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. No, it was gold this time. Okay. I think. And there was Patrick Chan, Chan and Elvis Stoiko, which oh, I love. Both. Elvis, Elvis Stoiko is like from. So we had to look it up, but it, uh, his. He really made it big in the Olympics in 94, which is both well, like there when was we were both. 92 at 96. No, there was 94. Was Lily that? Hammer. 92 was Albervale. Oh, yeah. 96 that was when Winter Olympics switched to the other years. Yeah. So, um, yes. So, yeah. And. He redid. He, you know so the he, iconic skate, if you watch figure skating it, at all, well, the one he did in the black uniform with the gold flashes and he still had the mullet. Enter the Dragon. And he was doing Enter the Dragon. And it's all like and Kung had, Fu moves. It had actual karate moves and Kung Fu moves mixed into, into his, his figure, skating. figure skating. He redid that oh. one at this. And like, he's 46. Yeah. We had to look it up. And he's still Yeah, he missed amazing. one of his I mean, jumps, he didn't but. do quads. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, they were amazing. It was, he was fun. He's, he was he's the a first good guy, entertainer. He was the first guy who did a quad in, in competition, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Or an Olympic level competition, maybe. Yeah, but probably lots of people um, tried He them was and... fabulous. Yeah. And um, yeah. And then, and then there was... Um, Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford. Yeah. Okay. He's a he's a composer too. Yeah. So in the middle of this ice show, they, they wheeled out a grand piano onto the ice, so and cool. he played one of his own compositions, mm -hmm. which apparently some of the music they had skated to was his yeah, compositions. Yeah, and he com composed but he had stuff also, for Patrick Chan. Yeah. So yeah. it starts out he's out on the ice all alone playing this music and it's beautiful and then Patrick Chan skates out and, and skates skated, oh. the part of his program to the rest of that and it, it was it yeah. was so cool it was so cool and she she was like okay he immediately got hotter <laughs> with that yeah because Ta talent, talent is sexy is, yeah it really is plus I, my first like I went to school for music yes like yeah that's what I yeah. did in college so yeah. well the first time the first time <laughs> I'm uh, old I did it a few times <laughs> three um, yeah. Then and Caitlin then, Osmond, yeah. who's a uh, women's figure skater. She, she was, redid the Black Swan. Yeah. 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 So in the first half of the program, all, all of them like did a kind of iconic program that they had done at the Olympics or whatever yeah. at one point, at the height of their career kind of thing. Um, so um, Virtue and Moore did um, Moulin Rouge. Yeah. And Patrick Chan did Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was really cool. And then the second half, they just did some really fun stuff. Yeah, they had a like a dance off between the girls <laughs> and the guys. And oh, yeah. it was so much fun. And they did a lot of group pieces that they'd choreographed together. together. Yeah, it, yeah, it was really great. Okay, so who else? Um, oh, oh Caitlin Kate. Weaver and uh, Andrew Pohe. Yeah. Was the other one. Yes. Yeah. And, and they're they ice fabulous. dancers. And again, like, yeah. you know, have won like three or four gold medals at Worlds, several medals at the Olympics. They're, yeah. They were all like really well decorated skaters. Well, and. And it's and so funny because. They oh. were the. So, Virtue and Moore, Patrick Chan, um, Caitlin Osmond, and was it Duhamel and Radford or Weaver and Pohe who were the gold medal winning team? From um, the last year? Olympics. Uh, Doesn't matter. One of those two. Yeah, I think 
So which one is Ice Dance and which... No, they both do Ice Dance, don't Those they? are both Ice Dance. Oh, well, yeah. that doesn't narrow it down. But um, anyway, one of them... One of them was them, this Olympics, one, one was, was the, the last. previous. Yeah. And, and, yeah, so Team Canada. Yeah. Um, for one gold for the, the team, team skate, skating. The team event. Yeah. Um, it was so cool. It was. Uh, yeah. I was just going to say something about oh, that. sorry. It's okay. I was saying... Oh, the weird thing. So... Everybody who, well, not everybody, some people who watch skating just for the Olympics and are really, like, the jumps are impressive, right? So you watch the individual skating or even the pair skating and you get these huge thrown jumps and you get, like, triples and quads and pairs of triples following yeah. each other and, like, loads of combination stuff and, and stuff like that. But it was so cool. The ice dancing, like, I'm not big into dancing and the ice dancing is supposed to look like dancing, so... <laughs> It, it's less of an appeal to me, but it was so cool seeing, like, the timing and stuff between yeah. them. Yeah. Like, the 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 few little jumps they did um, were just little ones for I the most part. doesn't usually do jumps. None at all. Okay. But yeah. um, Pohe and Weaver did uh, little thrown, mm, yeah, okay. thrown jumps. Um, That's not a jump, then, if it's a throw. Well, fair enough. <laughs> But some of the holds they did on the yeah. lifts were amazing, and the like the in sync footwork between them was the incredible. footwork fabulous. Like, and that was the thing I that caught my eye with Stoiko. Oh yeah, Stoiko was Stoico always too. known for his. Like, it wasn't his, just the power yeah. of his quad. Yeah, which he his didn't amazing do. Amazing footwork. The footwork yeah. sequence sequences were still like mm. like, like crisp. crisp. Yeah, as. Oh. Anyone, and it's so funny seeing Elvis Stoiko and Patrick Chan at the same thing because, okay, so this friend of ours described Elvis, Elvis Stoiko doing that um, performance of his as a bulldozer doing kung fu on skates. <laughs> he's he's very, it was very solid athletic and athletic. Yeah, yes, and then Patrick Chan is just so. Well, he's athletic as well, yeah, but, it's, but it's very smooth and, and graceful, and everything and looks effortless. Yeah, like, like effortless. Yeah. Actually, they were talking about that. They were saying like he just he makes everything look so easy, and then you go and try it, and you're like, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but, actually, uh, I yeah. think it was it was either Tessa Virtue or Megan Duhamel that said that that yeah. like he makes it look easy, and you try it, and then you're like. Oh my God, that hurt! <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It was really fun. It, it was, was so, so much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Okay. So other culture consumed. Uh, you have some, right? I do. I well, I've I've been I've been listening to lots of audiobooks, yeah. but I also read a really good book. It's called The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. And it's a graphic novel. I've been really into graphic novels lately. Just oh. the good ones. <laughs> and um, uh, it's really cute. It's about this dressmaker. And she, she gets a job at the palace um, and discovers that she's making dresses for the prince who sneaks out at night um, as Lady... Oh, I can't even remember the, the, the name he made up for himself. But basically, he... he dresses up as as a woman um and sneaks out every Goes night and he's, and he's like <laughs> the the height of fashion like everybody follows him and stuff and and it's all about you know like she wants to move like become well known for her dressmaking but she can't really um say you know she's the ladies dressmaker because everybody also knows she works at the palace and they might figure out that it's him and it's all oh. fabulous it was really adorable and just amazing art I'm, I'm really picky about the art in my mm -hmm. in the graphic novels I, I have a certain style I like yeah. um, and it's not like the normal like like Marvel or DC mm -hmm. um, it's a lot I don't know Maybe closer to manga, but not really. I don't know. I really, I really liked it anyway. I would highly recommend it. It's called The Prince and the Dressmaker. That sounds cool. Yeah. Did you get that one from the library? Or? No, that was one I bought. I had ordered a bunch of books for the store and went, ooh, they've got this one. And yeah, we don't order a lot for the store because shipping. Shipping. Shipping um, kills, yeah. Yeah, but there's a couple places and, and this one, yeah. I got some for the store. Actually, I was unloading the box. <laughs> And I was like, you know, I had a stack for me and a stack for the store, and they ended up being the same height. Yeah. Um, but most of the ones in the stack for me were ones that, club. yeah, so me and some friends are doing a book club, and I wanted to um, read some books and see if they would be good for the book club. Yes. Yeah. Because these are books that I should be able to get. 
couple copies of. Yep. So yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, and then you you listened to started listening to an audiobook. Yeah, um, I've talked about reading James Rollins before, and I've been really into knitting lately, and I really want, need to get some spinning mm -hmm. done as well and get my loom uh, warped and ready to go. Um, so I need to keep my hands doing those things. So I went to the library and got some audiobooks. So I got... <gasps> she got she got her first library card in Dawson. Yeah, first one here. She's a real person now. Sorry, libraries like, are important to me. Um, <laughs> usually she drives, so I don't go to the library without her. So yeah, she would so just, just pick up the books that yeah. I wanted anyway. So... Um, I, I just laugh at that because when I was moving down to Calgary, so I was 17 when I was going to university, and it's so weird that they don't consider that old well, enough to in, get them. In Alberta, 18 is adult. Um, that's when you can drink. That's when you can get a library card, apparently. Yeah. Well, no, that's when you can get an adult library card. So I, I this is important to me. <laughs> um, so I looked into how to get a library card in Calgary before I moved down there. So I, we got down there, and I was like, okay, mom is... Mom drove me down. She was dropping me off. She was staying one day and then going back. So I dragged her into the library and was like, I need to get a library card. And they're like, oh, well, you need, you know, a piece of ID with your address on it. And I was like, I have nothing. And if you don't give me a library card today, I'm not going to be able to get a library card. And I was like almost in tears. Because they needed her parents' signature yes, if she wasn't 18 yet. Because if, was if I wasn't getting an adult card, yeah, my mom had to sign for it. And she wasn't going to be there. And they, and they were like you're here for university? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, it's okay. You, you will give you an adult card. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's important to me because like my first year, my first month at university in 30 days, I read 31 books. Yeah. And you weren't reading graphic novels at that point. Oh, no. Like well, they were novels. Yeah, I was reading novels. But um, I, I didn't have friends. I didn't know anyone in the city. Um, my courses, I mean, my courses were, it was a heavy course load, but, but the first month is always not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all I did was read for a month. So yeah. And I definitely couldn't have afforded it because I was in university. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So she, she got a library card. I got a library card. I bet I pulled out, uh, another James Rollins and I got the seventh plague. Um, because I seem to like the, yeah. that style. And it's good, mindless fun. Like, I can listen to that. I could I could even read that if I could flip the pages <laughs> and knit at the same time. Yeah. Like, it doesn't require a ton of focus. They're yeah. just light and fluffy. Although there's sometimes action. weird, violent, yeah. or action or yeah. something. But they're yeah. light and I've, I've been, They're fun. I've been, for audiobooks, I've been listening to light and fluffy as yeah. well. I've been, re I've li been listening to romance novels by Mary Ballog. I really like the James Rollins because they have, like, at the end of his books, any of the science, like, he does a lot of cutting-edge science and just writes about it as though it were a little more advanced than it is yeah. right now. Like, the last like one the, I was the reading... the cutting-edge stuff was, you know, normal. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. in in practical use kind yeah. of thing. Or yeah. or in secret use, but <laughs> yeah, it's yes, used yes. in the book. Like, yeah. um, the last one I read was uh, The Sixth Extinction, and they talk about um, synthetic DNA and XNA, and that's kind of at the cutting edge right now. Or they've been working on it for a few years, but it's not yeah. super feasible yet. But they're that, they're working on that. Yeah. So and, and it's yeah, cool. And he has bunch, like yeah. thirty pages at the end of the novel with all the like all the white papers and science papers and stuff that he read to get the information he needed to write this book. I think like, that's so cool. From whether it's NASA publications or science journals or whatever there's tons of it's like reading the bibliography and footnotes on a biography like you just can't skip that stuff it's uh, good stuff uh, biography well, or whatever yeah like nonfiction. you read the footnotes. yeah i was gonna there's, say in bios it's there. usually like letters and stuff like yeah, that okay. not so information like science not, books and no, history books yeah. and yeah we're gold. nerds we're nerds we're nerds <sighs> so so i think i think that's probably long enough for today we we did a lot of talking last time yes we did <laughs> about, about nothing less we covered yes. way more stuff today did in we? half the time did we did we we did yes so fiber fest fiber fest
We're very excited. I, I designed a website. I used Squarespace for the first time. It was really handy. Yeah. Now I'm super now I'm like easy. planning. I'm I'm gonna redo our website. Well, because our our website we just is, have a blog. It's just we a blog have, that yeah. we post to like once every two months or so. I, she's, yeah. she's the one, the only one that posts to it because I'm terrible. Yeah. Um, well, and other things have taken well, priority. And, and we also have Instagram and Facebook and yeah. Ravelry and you, this and <laughs> yeah. Um, but now I'm going to design a website. Yeah. Speaking of uh, how to contact us and the Fiberfest, um, if you are looking for information, peacefiberfest.com. Fiber, R E. Yes, Canadian spelling. We're Canadians. Peacefiberfest.com. Yes. And uh, Peace Fiber Fest on Facebook and Instagram as well. And we'll be talking about it in our Ravelry group. We wanted to announce it here first. Yes. There will well, be except to, you know, the people a, a that we A couple of local people that to, we asked to be yeah. involved. Um, but if you have any questions, there's a bit of information on the website now and there will be much more come the following like this coming week once we get an answer from our venue about table sizes well mainly in the next week there will be more information for vendors yes um and then once we start to get vendors um we will start to uh post some pictures of their stuff and yeah we'll do a vendor gallery and yeah. kind of highlight yeah highlight some of our vendors stuff. And some of our favorite dyers and makers. Yeah. 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 We're That'll really excited. Okay. So we didn't really have tons of culture consumed this week yeah. because we were consumed with planning for the Fiber Fest. So yeah. I think we will leave you there. Have an awesome week. Yeah. Do lots of knitting or crochet or all the things that you like to do. And yeah. we will see you next time. Yeah. And now I'm going to go pee. Because <laughs> you needed to know that. Yeah.